Hello friends, welcome to Python for Everyone. In this episode, we're gonna talk about lists and the operations you can do on lists. Let's start off with some code. We start off with an example list. A list is just a variable that can hold multiple items. Lists can hold any number of items of any type. And in this code example, we have some operations on a list that are gonna show you that the list can be manipulated and individual elements can be used. So let's get started. Okay, so we start off with the first instruction on the list. Line one creates a list. Notice the square brackets and that there are a sequence of values inside the square brackets separated by commas. This is gonna create a list called to-do list. Running next, you can see that in our global frame, we have to-do list, and now to-do list is represented as an object. Lists are like a numbered sequence of cubby holes. Inside the first cubby hole is the word eat, inside the second cubby hole is the word sleep, and inside the third cubby hole is the word program. Now the cubby holes have indexes. That's how you can get at and manipulate the values inside of each one of the cubby holes. And one of the essential important things you need to remember is that the first cubby hole is index number zero. So you can see that in the objects view. So if I print here, I'm printing the object at index zero. And to do that, I use the square brackets and zero with my to-do list. So if I run next, you can see that my program outputs the word eat. That is the value inside of the list at index zero, which is item number one. The next thing I can, the next thing I'm showing you is I can reassign the contents of a, one of the cubbies in the list. Uh, this time I'm gonna take index one, that's the second item that contains sleep. After I run this uh, line, it's going to contain the word nap. So if I do next, you can see that sleep has been replaced by nap. I overwrote the existing value. And now I'm gonna show you some operations that modify the list by adding to the list or removing items from the list. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, insert the word shower into position number two. That means that shower is going to show up at position number two, at index number two, and program is gonna get moved to the right. Okay, so now I have eat, nap, shower, program. Okay, line five shows you how to remove an item from the list. There are two ways to remove an item from the list. You can either remove it by value, which is what I'm doing on line five, or you can remove it by index, which is what I'm doing on line seven. So let's start by value. This remove function is gonna go through the list and find the first instance of the word program, and it's gonna take it out. So running next, you can see that program has disappeared. Okay, now we're on line six, and what line six does is append. The append function adds a value to the end of a list. Okay, so there we go. The code, now we have code at the end. That's what append does. Line seven is going to delete index number three. Index number three contains the word code. It's the thing that we just added. And it's important to see the difference between remove and delete. Kind of looks a little different, right? The reason for that is that delete works on a bunch of different types of uh, data structures, like dictionaries, which I'm gonna show you next. Uh, and so it's more generic in the way you use it. So I'm gonna say delete to do item or to do list index three. And finally, I'm gonna sh show you how to clear all of the information in the list. The clear function takes a list and makes it empty. So those are the really important operations on a list. The things to remember about a list is that it can hold any number of items, zero or more. The items are held in order. In other words, each of the items has an order, starting with zero, the first item, going to the number of items in the list, which is gonna be number of items minus one. You can insert and remove items from the list at will. 
lists are going to be really important because lists can hold huge amounts of data. And in a real program, a list can be very, very large, uh, many megabytes or even gigabytes. Lists are also going to become important because in, an, in a future session, we're going to talk about the for loop. And the for loop is what gives lists real power. Okay, so this has just been a short video about how to use and manipulate a list. If you want to find the code for this example, look in the description below. Try out adding your own items to the list and see how they work. Try running the operations in a different order. You might see an error if you try and delete something that doesn't exist, for example. There's a lot to know about lists, and if you want more practice, go to my GitHub link and look at my Python for Everyone course. There you'll find notebooks with a complete description of all of the operations on the list and labs to help you practice those operations. All right, so next up we'll talk about dictionaries.